Here's my movie pitch for my novel, Max, the Blind Guy. In one sentence, the smoldering romance of a 40-year marriage ends when she abandons her blind husband in a Venetian cafe. Max the Blind Guy is the story of retired artist Maximilian Ruth, newly blinded by accidental collision with a car hubcap. But this doesn't stop his wife, Greta Ruth, from dragging him through four European capitals for a last hurrah holiday before they retire to their country home in Midwest America. Amid the laughs and arguments and sexual dalliance played out by the Golden Elite's travel group, Max Ruth has no idea that his wife planned her revenge many months before. This is Greta Ruth's final act of punishment for Max's years of infidelity and his neglect for her after the death of one of their twin children, a son, more than 30 years ago and one last punishment for her own guilt over having convinced him that he must sleep with other women while she got over her crack up after their son's death. When she awoke from her stupor, Max had already desired more of this tasty side of life. More of the story as it fits with the film, Max the Blind Guy is a fun story to watch take place. It is a story that is felt against your own life. The sour ending is not tragic or pitiful, but rather fitting and ironical. The audience won't see the ending coming. The film narrative, as I see, is staged closely to the book. Present-day scenes take place in Prague, Vienna, Salzburg, and Venice, meshed with intervals of long-form flashbacks, which chronicle the history of Max and Greta's life together from the first time they meet in the Chicago library where Greta works, to Max's rising artistic success and the trepidation of Greta bearing twins and her early fears that Max's travel brings him too close to sexual danger, and finally to the death of their son from a fall out of a high-rise window. This event leads to Greta's crack-up and, through the veil of sorrow and depression, her suggestion that Max take a lover. Meanwhile, their surviving daughter grows up wild. Later, Greta takes her own lover as a first revenge against Max. The textural present-day episodes show this aging couple as dutiful towards each other, but not others, often even loving. Why? This comes from their long past, their shared values and their deep-set passion for each other. And so they seem in the present. Yes, some arguments come up and moments from their past, but nothing about the infidelity. There exists a constant undergrowth of friction seen inside every multi-decade marriage. The key to the audience's understanding of the present day lies in its relationship to the past. In these scenes, the series of events create a foundation of animosity held at bay only through frequent separations, revenge infidelities, and that overriding feeling that, between them, there is no one else who can fill that great love desire they once shared. And that's my movie pitch for this novel, which, if you read down below, you'll find contact information and... I'm ready to make more pitches. Thank you.